Hello and welcome. My name is Arun Nagarajan, and this is an exciting new episode of Google Developers Live. The folks that follow this series pretty regularly, I work as part of the App Script Developer Relations team, and uh, we're actually here in Mountain View today, and we have some special guests with us that are going to be uh, talking through some exciting new products that they work on, uh, the Fusion Tables product specifically. And throughout the series, we'll talk about how will you use App Script and other apps APIs to integrate with Fusion Table. Um, so, like I said, my name is Arun Nagarajan. I'm with the App Script Developer Relations team, and my guests are. Hi, I'm Sri Balakrishnan. I manage the Fusion Tables development team. And I'm Warren Shen. I'm a software engineer uh, building out the Fusion Tables API. It's very exciting to have uh, core members of the engineering team on, on screen with us. So, uh, Sri is actually going to start off by explaining what Fusion, Fusion Tables is all about. Uh, I think a lot of folks that may dial in may know a lot about a lot more about apps and app script than Fusion Tables. So we figured we'll take a couple of minutes to just explain what Fusion Tables is all about. Um, and there are a couple of slides here that uh, Sri will kind of walk us through as well. Thanks, Aaron. So, um, well, for those of you who are not familiar, Fusion Tables is a free Google Drive application. Um, it's been around for at least two years now, and um, it's really designed for people who want to manage data but who are not expert database administrators. So it's very, we make it very easy for you to upload large data sets up to about 100 megabytes. We store it in the cloud and then give you a variety of ways of visualizing that data, analyzing that data, and um, importantly for today's discussion, being able to access data through an API. And I'll let Warren talk about the API. Uh, yeah, so right now we have um, a web app that lets you upload the data and edit it and publish, uh, publish it. Uh, but our API lets you do everything that you can do in the UI pro programmatically. So you can build apps that will uh, upload data, let users uh, edit the data, uh, publish the data. You can adjust the um, styles and templates, which is the things that tell you how to display a map or a visualization. Uh, you can edit those through the API um, and keep your data up to date. And as we'll talk about today, keep it in sync with other data sources. So I, maybe I took to this slide here. So the, this really shows a very Typical flow that um, of you know a lot of uh, there are a number of compelling applications that people have created where mm -hmm. you might have a database of um, you know addresses or um, locations and some properties about that like you know the number of people who live at that place or the uh, amount of um, uh, car traffic at that at a particular intersection so you can create that data as a CSV import it and then we will be able to um, geocode the addresses we'll be able to analyze if there are uh, shapes in there, we can handle KML shapes, and then allow you to kind of merge that with other data. This is the kind of the integration or fusion step, and then visualize it on a map like you can see here. Uh, this, is a, this is an example of something created in, uh, um, uh, it was up in near, I think it was, uh, I can't remember the, it was one of the government agencies up in the state of Washington. Who, who Very was, cool. I think this is looking at their health outcomes. Oh. All right. So. Um, and then um, the important thing now is that once you've got it up and you can do that, you can analyze the data in the application, you can now also access that data once you've uploaded it through the API. That's great. Yeah, so it's not a siloed system. You're yes. actually able to interact with it yeah. and exchange information mm -hmm. um, without having to always go into the UI. Yeah. Well, so I think the, the, the fact that you've got a UI makes the API more usable, right? Because you don't always have to go and look at the, query the API to see whether your data is correct or not. You right. can go to the UI use the application, see what, whether your data is correct, analyze it, and then it, once it's correct, then you know that your application is going to work. Right. That's and great. in the UI, we have tools to explore your data to just do some quick checks and make it very easy to explore what you have right. in the application, in your data set. That's great. Mm -hmm. and, and the API itself, um, mm -hmm. the documentation, I, I had a chance to kind of go through it. Um, I thought it was very straightforward to use. Mm -hmm. um, so could you talk a little bit about what are some of the critical things that people need to know about the API? Uh, what are some of the important protocols and uh, authentication mechanisms that people ought to know? Uh, yeah, so uh, the API is a RESTful API. Uh, we have a collection of different resources uh, which are pretty straightforward, table, column, uh, uh, and then we have a query feed where you can issue SQL queries. Uh, you can edit and modify uh, your tables and columns, just say column names or type data types for the columns RESTfully. You can issue SQL, SQL queries. And we have methods to um, edit, delete, or uh, import uh, data through the API. Uh, authentication is done through OAuth 2. Uh, so if you have a private table, then you will need OAuth authentication to um, edit the table or to view the table. 
Uh, for public tables, you don't need OAuth 2, you just need a developer key, oh, cool. in, which it, in which case you can um, uh, allow um, people to access the data, uh, not write to it, but read the data uh, without the authentication. That's great. Mm -hmm. That's great. Yeah, and the documentation site for the folks that are not familiar with is developers.google.com slash fusion tables. Very easy to find, and there's a really a wealth of information there to get started. Um, so from from a point of AppScript, I'll, I'll do a quick uh, introduction as well as to what it is and, and what AppScript gives you. Um, the developer page for AppScript is developers.google.com slash apps-script. And we actually just recently launched a, a redone website with a lot more content and better organization of the information that we had as well. Um, and AppScript is all about doing more with Google Apps. So taking the power of products like Gmail, Sites, Drive, Docs, spreadsheets, and so on, and being able to inter integrate them with each other, with other third-party systems, other Google systems, and being able to build workflows and little applications for your team or your company uh, is something that AppScript is really good at. And to top it all off, you build it in the cloud. So you go to a browser to write the code. It's all JavaScript, so you don't have to learn a new language. And the API is actually super straightforward. Uh, a lot of times, I find myself just using the autocomplete to build new things rather than even look at the reference documentation. Uh, so hopefully, you'll get a flavor for that today as we build some of the interesting things um, in, in, the, in the rest of the session. Um, so what I figured out we'll do is kind of showcase some of the uh, existing sample sets of stuff that we've had with Fusion Tables. Um, one of the ones that I think is really kind of um, uh, that kind of jumped at me was this caterpillar information. I can't really pronounce the Astraptes. Uh, uh, and fulg fulgurator. fulgurator. <laughs> Actually, there, just a quick thirty-second side story. So this uh, this uh, is involved. This is a data set that's important to us because it, it's part of the founding of the product. Ah. We all uh, the the team went to Costa Rica. Mm -hmm. Ah. And, uh, Jungle tour. And uh, the the. So you guys collected this data. Well, the idea to for the product came from this visit to Costa Rica, where we met this uh, these uh, biologists who were collecting data on uh, caterpillars. And they, they wanted a tool to be able to you know share that with other scientists, all right? And so uh, that's kind of the where the idea for the tool came from. And so we so we'd like to use this. In our yeah, examples. that's great. And and, and so uh, always from the genesis, it had a very much a uh, lot of data, but built to visualize. Yeah, and share. Uh, part and share. engineered and yeah, 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 and share and collaborate mm -hmm. aspect to it. And you know, one of the things you can see here <coughs> is we we like to show pictures as well, right? So right. we make it easy for you to put an image in, it, in a table and the image is rendered. Right. right. Mm -hmm. Just by loading data in, you yeah. immediately have sort of an application where you're able to go in right. and say, show me all um, you know, female caterpillar species. Precisely, yep. right. Um, mm -hmm. And then also be able to look at it as cards, which yeah. I thought was kind of a yeah. nice way to mm -hmm. uh, browse right. through the data that you had. And it sounds like you can actually customize it with HTML and CSS as exactly, well. Exactly, yeah. Uh, you can feel you can yeah. make yeah. it how you want. And then um, sort of the geocoding and yeah. being able to show that in a show map. Where they, where, they found it, where they found these butterflies. Yeah, right. and this is, I, I, I got to imagine, this is really rewarding and fun for scientists yeah. that are not programmers exactly. to be able to see. Yeah. So they, they didn't know, need to know anything about database management or anything like that. They just needed to know. They know their data. We make it easy for you to get data up and do useful things with it. Very so good. Very good. Uh, Very good. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. And yeah, I did not know that uh, right. anecdote about this being uh, yeah. one of the founding data sets to mm -hmm. power fusion tables. Uh, that's a great little tidbit that we learned here. So that's great. Yeah. Um, so I figured this is important just so for the folks that have not seen what Fusion Tables feels like, what it, what it looks like. Um, and, and just to kind of showcase this interaction with the API, what I'll show you is um, you can actually take the table ID, go into the Fusion Tables um, document, documentation page, go into the query page, down to the SQL. And then you're able to test the API right from within the documentation. So this is something you'll see in a lot of different Google Developer Products pages. Mm -hmm. You have to authorize yourself. And I had already logged in, so it didn't actually prompt me which account or anything like that. And I can just say, select star from that table. And that anyone that's done any SQL, that'll look very familiar. And I can just hit execute. And I should get back the data um, that so easily. Just one, I think, Aaron, that will only work if the table is um, Public. Well, if you or authenticate, I, I did authenticate. Or, or, yeah. yeah. So if you if you have a private tables and you click on the OAuth key, then that will actually take care of the really? OAuth dance. Underneath yeah. The so that's you. one of the nice power right. of this is you can actually preview right. what you're about to build right. from within the console, right. 
Uh, so you learned something too. Yeah, I did. <laughs> yeah. uh, and yeah. the, uh, the results are in JSON, so you can feed this into it's a, it's native JSON, so you can feed it into whatever other. Right, and and the fact that it's mm -hmm. JSON is just a JavaScript object mm -hmm. makes it really easy to work with yep. App Script. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, you, you can you have the option of also taking it as CSV. As CSV so if you require yeah. CSV, there's a parameter that will uh, specify what output format. Yeah, I, I did I see that as well. It's JSON and JSONP, right? As well. Uh, yeah, I th yeah. I th yeah, you can have a callback as mm -hmm. well. Yep, I noticed yep, that. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, um, so what we figured for the rest of this demo, uh, the session was to kind of dive into one of the demos that we built, a little application that we came up with. Where um, last night I just sat in a, on my couch and just wrote down a lot of fake sample data. <laughs> <laughs> and the idea was that I'm a school district. I have about five schools in my district, and um, as someone in charge of uh, tracking progress across the district. I want to see the grades for a bunch of students across all these different schools and, and subjects. And also we'll have such that the uh, there's a, representation, a representative in each school that has to open a spreadsheet and then enter in those grades. So the entry mechanism is a spreadsheet, and then they can actually download the grades there as well. But then the visualization and then the merging aspects are all in fusion tables, which gives you a lot more power. And I could also publish this data in a summary format such that other journalists and uh, data scientists could take this data and use it as part of their own research and, and publications. So the, the fact that it's in Fusion Table gives that um, a potential roadmap. Um, so uh, like always, uh, the code that I'll be using is all on my GitHub page. So if you just go to github.com slash ENTAQ, uh, which is my handle, and then app script, there's a folder for Fusion Tables. And the two necessary files are right from there. So this is the this data set. Um, you know, pr about 200 rows. Uh, like I said, five schools. About I don't know. I forget how many um, rows per school. But um, you know, small data set to kind of prove the point. All of this is completely made up. Um, so we use student IDs here and sort of making up names. But the idea that is that this could be as rich as you want it to be. Um, so let's get started with just a very small uh, example of extracting this data. So for this, what I'll do is first create a spreadsheet. And I'll just call this um, student grades. And in order to put in uh, scripts at a spreadsheet level, you have to open the script editor from the spreadsheet itself. So you go to Tools, Script Editor. And uh, I'm not going to use any of the templates. I'll just use, um, I'll zoom in a little bit so you guys can see. And I'll call this uh, Load Grades. And I'm just going to copy the code for now, but I'll take a second to explain what the what what they do, uh, what what it does uh, in a second. So I'm just going to copy the raw code here, um, and save it, and rename this to the row utils. Um, and this is the code that is uh, row utils. Is actually, the, those that have done any sort of scripting will find this very familiar. This is straight from our documentation site. What this does basically is turns. Spreadsheets row, spreadsheet rows into a JavaScript object. So they're really easy to manipulate and, and map and, and, and load and uh, things like that. So I'll also copy the other code, which actually does the data exchange. So I'll make the raw version of this as well, so it's easier to copy and paste. I'll say new script file. I'll say load, um, load data. The file names actually don't matter. Um, it, it all kind of gets uh, bundled in together when it gets executed on the server side. Um, so I have to do a couple of things. Uh, Warren mentioned that this is OAuth based. Um, in this episode, we won't dive too deep into the OAuth process itself, but you will be able to follow along everything that you need to do. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and um, in our other episodes with the YouTube API uh, and the Salesforce API, we showed you all that's necessary to set up an OAuth uh, setup from scratch. So I'll go to developer.google.com slash console, which takes you to the developer console where you register your API uh, as a project, uh, API project, and then also get your OAuth2 client key. So I'll say create, and you'll say um, Fusion Tables GDL. <coughs> Excuse me. And that's going to create the project, and uh, you need to give it a few parameters. So we want the Fusion Tables API. Okay, and then go to API access, and then you want to create an OAuth2 client. I'll call it Fusion Tables GDL. I like to have this one memorized. Save us some time. Google.com slash apps dash script images script 128.png. 
um, and then also I'll use the same URL for my homepage URL. Okay. So in this next step, what you do need is to deploy the script that you have uh, as a web app, so you can use that as a callback. So this is a bit of a manual process for now, but um, this is something that we're definitely going to make a lot easier. Uh, but this is necessary for the time being. So you have to save the version <clears throat> and deploy it as the user running. And that's the callback URL that we have. And go back into the console, paste that in. So this is the tedious step that you have to go through the very first time you set up an OAuth2 project. And now you'll get what is the client and the client secret. So this is the project that I'll delete. And um, so you'll have to create your own uh, client ID and client secret. So I'll copy this. And in the code itself, you'll see placeholders. Well, you'll want to paste this in. Your client ID, uh, your client secret, and then your callback URL, which is um, what I had from right there. And the whole purpose of this is such that um, you're not specifying your password to this application that's trying to get data as you. You're just giving it, uh, del you're delegating your uh, access to it. Okay, and I need to save it one more time because I have to updated the code, and then we should be able to publish that and get started. All right, so I went fast. Hopefully, you'll be able to follow along. But if not, all this code and uh, the details are available in our prior GDLs. Okay, so what I'll do now is run the onopen function manually. It doesn't have to be manual. It could be um, when you reload the spreadsheet as well. So I'll authorize this and run it. So now when I go into my spreadsheet, there should be a new menu item called Fusion Tables. So this kind of showcases how you can inject custom menu into a spreadsheet as well. So hopefully you'll learn uh, ways to do that as well. And the very first thing I need to do is log in. So this is how I'm establishing my OAuth2 uh, identity and then also storing the token. So it's going to say, hey, this application that I defined earlier in Dev Console is asking for permission. I say allow access. And you can see that the scope is very restricted. All it can do is interact with this uh, fusion table object rather than a drive or a Gmail or anything else that, that might be more sensitive. And then I'm done. And I come back now and I say download from fusion tables. So it's a menu different process. It could be little icons and all that stuff as well. And there you have it. So the data downloaded from fusion table. And we only downloaded data for PK middle school. Right, so that's about uh, 33 records um, of data, 32 records of data, including the header, and that got automatically put into the spreadsheet. So that's a very simple kind of flow that I wanted to showcase. Um, what I can also do is now actually go ahead and edit the grade. So remember um, that student ID 1001 has a grade of 40. I'll go ahead and change it to 45. And one of the things I'm doing is tagging the changed column so that you can. The program can find it easily. And then I'll change his history grades to 90. Uh, give him a crank it up. So mm -hmm. in this example, I'm just uh, updating grades. But very easily, this example could be adapted to adding new grades as well from a Google form or from um, importing from other systems as well. Um, and then what I can do is say, upload to Fusion Tables. And this script, uh, which I'll walk through in a second, is able to understand what records change, what IDs are corresponding to that and then push those changes up to student uh, to the, um, the Fusion table itself. So if I go into um, my student record now, so there's the 40 and 60. And if I refresh this, that should reflect the new data of 45 and 90. So that kind of showed the round trip of downloading data from a Fusion table using the API after a, a establishing identity, and then also pushing data back. So, that was a very kind of quick starter, but hopefully you saw that these systems interoperate really well together. And uh, once you kind of set up the connection, uh, data can flow very freely. Uh, all you need to do is write the logic for which cells map to which fusion table columns and, and vice versa. And a lot of it could be generalized too. So uh, if any developers out there want to write a generalized framework that is smart enough to look at the column names and create the update, insert, select statements automatically, uh, that'll be great. Uh, the community will be uh, uh, very grateful for something like that to get started with rather than uh, someone like me writing it from scratch. Um, OK, so let's do a couple of things that are kind of Fusion Table specific. So one of the nice things about Fusion Tables is the ability to 
merge in data, right? So if I say file merge, it'll ask me which table do you want to merge in from. So if you notice, in here, I have a column for school, but there's no address associated with it. Let's say that there is a spreadsheet somewhere, um, perhaps in the real estate team, that tracks the addresses and uh, particular details about each school. And as a teacher, I don't necessarily have that. Um, and I can put it in manually, but I'd rather merge it in such that any changes in the main data set reflects in the merged version. So I could say file, merge, and pick that data set, catch up here. Not sure what's going on here. We'll spin. Let's refresh this one more time. All right, go to say file merge. There it is, school locations. I'm going to say next. And what that's going to do is scan the data in both the different data sets and say, which column do you want to use as a source of match? So I'm going to say school here and school on the right side as well. Think of it as a, as a visual join in this case uh, through example. I'm going to say next. And then it's adding in a new column called location for me. And this is actually kind of cool because what it does now is creates a whole new fusion table um, that is fused version of two different tables. And I can say view tables, view table. And it'll name it as merge of student information systems and school location. Now I have a new column called location. And it already added in a view that's a map. So that's one of the, I think, very impressive things about Fusion Table is that it's smart enough to see mm -hmm. things like location and address and automatically geocode that. Yeah, so sometimes you might, if it's a lot, if you're upload, uploading a lot of rows, it takes a while to geocode them all. So you'll see a little thing, dialog that comes up. But if it's just a few of them, it, it Yeah, in this example, right. yeah. Um, since I live and work in New York, I just was able to make up those fake addresses yeah. better than anything else. Uh, but uh, I thought that was really brilliant where you know, partial incomplete addresses like 34W42 mm -hmm. uh, or something even more obscure that only had zip code, right. 119 right. Madison one, you know, and right. zip code, uh, all that uh, became in a nice contextual map. Right. And over here, I can then say go to uh, filter by grade, yeah. mm -hmm. and I can say show me, um, and I can throw in another filter as well, let's say filter by um, subject. So I could say, show me where English grades are between 90 and 95. Mm -hmm. And you can see that two of the schools disappeared. Yeah. So yeah. at these three schools, uh, there are a few students that are achieving between 90 and 95 percent grade on their English topic. Mm -hmm. So we built a very simple yeah. visualization that allows me to, and I know obviously for five schools, not that impressive. When you have hundreds of points in the right. map, yeah. you can start seeing some clustering. And well, the thing is that you can color the icons based on the score right. as well. Yeah. Right. So, so we, you can customize how the map looks uh, with uh, different styling. And, and all of this can be built with the map, uh, with the API as well, right? Both yeah. the API and the UI, you yeah. can do it. Yes. So in this example, mm -hmm. I'm just kind of building right. it manually. And but just everything interacting you did here, you can do with the API. That, yeah. that's, really, mm -hmm. that's really cool. And the other thing that you can do here is you can publish this and you'll get an embeddable version of it. So something that you can put into your own site. That's great. Yeah, the publish aspect, I think, is really powerful as well uh, because it, it's not something that is restricted to just you. Right. It, it can be embedded into a Google site. Mm -hmm. It could be sent out as yep. a link in a newsletter. Yep. Uh, so it's, it's really, um, uh, really good at spreading the love there, which mm -hmm. is great. Um, let me show you one other thing, which is um, now we wrote the system. Um, in the code itself, you'll see that it's a lot of boilerplate stuff to manage the login and stuff like that. But the actual download part is plain run the SQL, get the data, and it's a one call to get it as a JavaScript object, and you just loop through and add the, add the rows. Um, the update uses a, a little trick that allows you to track on edit based on the trigger of on edit, and then you can just store if it's something that I care for, if the grade column is updated. It's a pretty naive tracker, but you, know, you can definitely improve it and add a lot more resilience to it. But hopefully, this is giving you some inspiration to do things like this. Uh, and then this is the code that uploads and then uh, logs what it is uploading. Um, and then the rest is all just kind of the OAuth2 dance that's, that needs to be maintained. Um, one of the other things that I kind of talked about briefly was the ability to filter data. And I kind of, the idea here is that 
um, I, if I'm uh, the principal for school A, I should only see grades for school A. Um, in this, it's very insecure. I put the code to fil filter in the main uh, class itself, but you can pull in libraries, which allows you to silo this out really nicely, uh, the logic for security. But you can see that at the very end of it, I just have a little JavaScript map object that tracks the account information to the school name. Um, so what I can show here is if I take this spreadsheet, and I'll just um, empty this out, go to share, send it to another account that I have, um, and copy that URL, same spreadsheet, so all the scripts come through as well. And then I go to another account, another window I have here, and go into this tab. So here I'm logged in as arun at pixels at gmail.com. The other one was arun.appscript at gmail.com. And the menu automatically popped up because that's registered to the on, on open trigger. And if I say log in here, because I do have to establish uh, my credentials as this account now. Takes a couple of clicks. Should be quick. Okay. All right. Okay. And then I'll, I can now download data. And this should, this data comes from Short Hills Prep, right? So this is not something that is the same. It's not the same data that the other spreadsheet was able to fetch. And from here, um, I can actually upload data. So I'll just change this to say something really low so we can filter it out easily. So student ID is 1009, and I'll say upload to fusion tables. Okay, and that should go through and just one row goes through. And, whoa. Okay, well, let's see if it went through. Uh, there was an error message there. But now when I come in here, and uh, first of all, I'll just find if there's any within um, for all subjects, anything within 30 and 40 and 35, let's say. Let's say 25. And there should be just one school. And that came in. Let's see if I refresh this. And if I hit find again, maybe I updated the same record. But um, what I'm trying to show here is the ability for uh, the data that still gets pushed to the original source. Uh, oh, sorry, I don't want to do that. Uh, gets pushed into the merged version as well. So the source of record is still the same, even though you may be merging it and visualizing downstream in other systems. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, even after we created this sort of uh, geospatial merged version, when I was still pushing to the main uh, source of student information, it's getting trickled down automatically. Right. Yeah, it all so gets you propagated. Right? Yeah, so you guys take care of that. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, not sure what happened there. Let's see if I can find that student and see if that data updated, but some network error or something like that. But I can vouch for the fact that it did work. Yeah, I can change it in here as well. <laughs> yep, that's that's another way to do it. Right. So um, hopefully that 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 all made sense. Uh, all this code is of course available for you to start playing around and get a sense for what's possible in Fusion Table, what's possible in AppScript. Uh, the magic in AppScript is all using URL fetch, which allows you to call third-party systems. And then if, if it's JSON, it's just a JavaScript object that you can parse easily. In this example, we integrated with spreadsheets, but uh, it could be a Google site. It could be a, a bunch of documents that you have in your drive. It could be Google Doc itself, so create a nice summary report in a doc. Uh, there are a lot of different things that you can really do with this. Um, so mm -hmm. did this all make sense? Anything that I forgot? that? Um, I just want to mention that one of the nice extensions that we have to SQL is we have geospatial query support. Ah, yeah. right? So you can say, find me all schools that are within a certain distance of this point or contained within this polygon. So that's a very, yeah. as a thing, a functionality you'll not find with a traditional SQL database. That's right. right. That's right. Yeah, and that's really where the power of a lot of the systems that we have, maps yeah. and right. the the ability to store a lot of data come together in a powerful right. application. So, right. I mean, uh, you can imagine. A, a mobile app developer could get a lot of use out of this. So you might have a bunch of um, you know t data that is very that has properties about certain locations, and then your app on the mobile device can select the ones that are near to where you are. All right. So mm -hmm. within, you show me all the information. You know, you'll just see that the view of the data that's within five miles of where you are. That's great. And that's mm -hmm. a very simple thing to do using our API. And, and you can just pass in latitude and longitude right. and the coordinates. Yeah, yeah there's a yeah. function, and then you pass the one at the lat long, and then that's return great. the geo points that are. 
Yeah, that's great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so our time is short. I think we're coming up on our time, but uh, you know, we were able to scratch the surface of what's mm -hmm. possible in the yeah. API, mm -hmm. um, and hopefully you're able to take a lot of what you saw and learn and build some really interesting and cool things. Uh, do share with us what you've built. There's some really good resources on uh, the Fusion Table side of things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, There's a user group and Stack Overflow yep. to get questions answered. That's great, yeah. The mm -hmm. Stack Overflow resource is actually great, especially mm -hmm. with the API. Mm -hmm. um, great place for developers to help each other, and yep. the Google developers do monitor it. Um, check out a lot of these talks and workshops that the team has given in the past. Um, a lot of videos, and I think I'm sure it's a lot of good code here that you can uh, start with as well. Um, and there's a really interesting set of examples that uh, the team has shared that are from government sources, from schools, from independent journalists. Um, so certainly take a look at that as well to learn more. Uh, can't wait to see what you guys build. Thank you very much for joining in. And thank you guys for thank joining. You. Thanks for having us. Yeah. Thank you.